Greetings, kinsmen. Frustratingly, in our last episode, all our hard work and the, just, the door just does not want to close. I thought about it, and the reason why was because it was rubbing on the front of the door jam. So I need to take those hinges out and set the hinges back a bit further. But first, I need to cut a little bit off the bottom. As you'll notice in a little bit, the door frame is rubbing on the bottom of that door. Guys, do me a favor. Be sure to like and comment down below. It really does help encourage me and keep this channel growing. And I could really use all the help I can get, like we all could. But I think what helps me the most is sharing my content, making sure that other people know what I'm doing and what I'm up to. It seems like every time I try and just cut off a little bit with the skill saw, I never get a straight cut. I should have instead gone on to the table saw and used that. But the best thing about all of this is that hindsight is 2020 and you could fix your mistakes for next time. Here I am using a sander to try and fix my mistake where I didn't get a straight cut. I failed to mention in the last video when using this tool which is called a trim router, you want to go in a counterclockwise motion. Otherwise the blades are going to kind of feed a bit too quickly and you're going to get a bad cut. I like including this to show you how you can get all of what you need routed. Sometimes if you can't reach or get to where you need to go, you need to change your perspective. I'm ripping out this old piece of oak that I've had sitting around forever. I'm ripping out a inch and a half width on it and it's already three quarter inch and this is for the locking mechanism. A correction, that's actually a two inch rip. Again, this footage is a year old and I'm gonna forget a lot of details. I don't have blueprints in front of me and I'm just going by the seat of my pants here. I think I paralyze on details too much and I'll never get stuff done. I think the best prescription for that is to just jump right in with no plans at all, just a general idea and see if I can make it happen. Again, I'm using my slide square or my combination square to make a, a slot for the locking me mechanism to slide in and out of. You'll see later on uh, just how it's all put together. It's inevitable for me to confuse you because I don't know how to talk to other humans. So if you have a question, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer.
yet another mistake I cut it off too soon and this is a problem because it's going to be hard to hold on to that and keep my fingers away from the blade so yeah buddy danger danger Ro robinson don't do it It's still a bit dangerous, but I can replace a clamp. Clamps are cheap. Fingers are not cheap. I can't buy a new finger. Well, not legally anyway. I just wanted to say real quick, I do sell my own shirts on Etsy. You can find the address down in the description below. And buying my shirts and buying my merch, of course, helps finance a lot of this stuff. And the more stuff you guys buy, the more stuff I can do for other people. Thanks. Classical me, just flying by the seat of my pants. I just don't have any blueprints to go off of. I'm just making it and measuring it as I go. I honestly have no idea why I'm removing the door again. Uh, just when you're tired, you think you're doing the right thing and you're just not. You're just adding more steps but I guess it couldn't hurt. I'm removing the door jam here just so I can actually get to it with the jigsaw so I can cut out that rabbit hole. This is how I do my rabbit hole. I use a 3 8 inch drill bit and I pile it to holes for the jigsaw blade to stick into. You know, if I had a plunge router and a jig, it would be much cleaner and crisper and faster, but I'm poor and I don't have one of those. rabbit hole is snug but that's what I want I want the lock to go into place and stay in place I don't want it to wiggle out or anything like that oh no almost there you go putting the door frame back together and again make sure you're using clamps you see that I have a little shim I don't want to mar up the door so use that to make sure that the wood isn't warped in any way. I'm piloting these holes in the brackets so the screws can actually screw into the door. And then once I screw it in, I'm gonna fill it in with putty and you won't even know that the screws are even there. Again, I'm poor and I can't afford a table router nor the space to hold it. So what I did was take my trim router and I clamped it to the table like so. 
reason why is once these pieces are attached to the door, I'm not going to be able to get that trim router close enough to get every single edge. The one side that I'm not going to route is the side that's touching the door. One, it wouldn't sit right against the door, and two, you're just not going to touch it. The router bit and the router aren't the best, so I have to sand off any burrs and rough spots. Just so uh, when you put your hand across it, you're not going to get a splinter and you're not going to get cut. If you're interested, this is 120 grit sandpaper and it's ideal for having a nice smooth finish on hardwoods. I think I measured the holes and marked them before I'm about to glue it and screw it, but I probably didn't record the video, so oops. Right here, this is called a pin nailer, and I'm using that to keep the piece in place before I screw it. Otherwise, it's just going to shift and move, and it's not going to stay where I want it to. Now I'm just cleaning up the glue that got squeezed out as you're nailing it and screwing it in place. And again, you got to pilot your holes to make sure that you're not splitting the wood. This is white pine and it's very prone to do that. As much as I talk about how soft and weak white pine is, White pine is so light and it's ideal for big projects like this. I don't have to carry a door that's made entirely of oak. It's just going to be way too heavy and that's one more thing I got to haul out of my van. And at the end of the day, all of that stuff that you're carrying adds up and it makes you tired. And I'm lazy. So two things you're going to notice. One, those holes that we just drilled in and screwed into the door uh, now filled with putty and I'll sand that down later and blend it in better but now that hole is right where the handle is going to be so I'm marking the hole right where the locking mechanism is fully in place and when it's fully retracted I'm just drawing a straight line between those two poles I'm going to cut a slot where the door handle can slide in and out of on both sides of the door. Pro tip guys, uh, just so I don't put a hole in my bench, I put the door up on a couple of blocks so that way the drill bit can get all the way through the door and keep my bench intact. Again, this is a 3 8 inch hole, and I'm going to use that to make our rabbit hole, just like you saw earlier. This is a round rasp file and it just is perfect for this application. It gets in little corners and cleans them out. Now to get rid of those rust spots so it doesn't rub up against our door handle. To test our door to make sure I put my screwdriver all the way through the door with that rabbit hole and slid it back and forth. This is white polypropylene rope and I'm going to use this to make my door handle. And right now I am crowning the end and I'm going to splice it back in on itself to make a better end. Now I'm not great with this and you can probably find somebody else online to show you because you can clearly tell I'm struggling just to get a crown put in place.
All right, buddy, you got it. The general idea of how to splice something is that you want to lace it back in or on itself, but against the general flow or the way the line has been laid out. So as you can see, kind of that's how it's supposed to look. I skip forward as I know that there are better sources online to show you exactly how to do it. The reason why I want to bend red on my door handle is because it's fatter than the regular rope, so you got more grip on it and it doesn't fray on you. You want to cut off all the excess threads that are hanging out and then you want to melt it and blend it back in onto the rope. Then you want to take this thread and wrap it around the base of that bitter end just so that thread won't come unraveled and fray on you. When you wrap it, make sure that you're placing it right next to you, not overlapping in a sloppy manner. You want to leave a little bit left at the end so you can tie it back together. And when you tie it back together, you want to melt it and keep it from unraveling. Yep. No, it's not lighting. Oh, you're going to try it again? Keep trying? Nope. No, it's not lighting. Oh, maybe I try it this way. Nope. Come on, buddy. Move on. Now I'm just measuring out the overall length of the handle. Just make sure I have enough. And I figure three hand breadths would be more than enough for what I need. I'm melting the ends of this to make sure that the threads don't come unraveled and frayed while I'm splicing it back in on itself. It's not the best angle, but it's what I got. What I'm doing here is marking where I want that splice to start. I'm doing that by using the string and wrapping it around a few times and keeping that in place so it doesn't slip or move in any way. Once that thread is in place, it's gonna keep that crown right where I want it to, and I'm much more easily able to splice it back in on itself. So you know what's up. I'm gonna skip ahead and close out the end of this video. This is how the door was made. If you like this episode, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell button. And don't be afraid to leave a comment below to share your thoughts, advice, and questions. If this has helped you in any way, buy me a horn of meat on my Ko-Fi or head over to my Patreon. If every sub gives just a dollar a month, our projects will become more epic and our stories legendary. I also have my own merch, so you can show your love for the channel and look good doing it. But more importantly, be humble, be helpful, and be honored.